Hello, 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 internet, and welcome to the Glitchy Gamer Podcast, the podcast that glitches on the channel every now and then. I have a guest with me, Chris Levi13. Thank you for chilling with me on this podcast. Hey, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me here, Linda. Yeah, man. It is always a pleasure to have awesome people on my podcast. We are going to talk about something that came to light, and I know plenty of channels have talked about this, but I wanted to give my two cents, and I asked Chris, and he was cool with it, so pretty much it's about, we just found out that the Intellivision Miko is now going to have all the information about what color is going to what store, and with that change your viewpoint on buying that system. So say you hate GameStop. You don't like that company. You don't want to support their business anymore. But you find out that your specific color is going to be to that store. Would you still buy that color? Would you still support the company? Or would you just call it quits and not buy the system at all? So for me, that was what I was thinking about when I heard that the purple system that I was so happy to get was going to be at GameStop. So... Did you hear about that, Chris? And what is your thoughts on that? I haven't yet heard about that, but when it comes to my thoughts on it, I mean, it would be kind of hard because I'd be like, I'm, a, I'm still supporting that company. But in the long run, you're only supporting that, that company for the short run. When you get that system and you have it in your home and you hook it up and you hook it up to the internet, you're supporting that company in the long run. So I would... Still, even though I may not like it, I would go in there and get it if it's the color that I truly want. Yeah, so you, you say you would still buy the color even even though it's with the company that you hate. Yes, if, if it meant, meant, meant I could get the product. Okay. So, say you're banned from that company. Would you still find a way to get the, the console itself? Like, say you're banned from the store because, you know, Retro stores and, and certain well, companies would do that. Would you still find a friend or somebody to do that for you? Well, yeah. Because b- being in YouTube and the gaming, gaming, we find ways to get imported products of, of special editions and all that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there would be a workaround to find, hey, I can't get go in that store. The company doesn't like me. Hey, you know that company or, hey, you work there. Can you get me get me one of those and I'll pay you, pay you the amount or maybe a little extra just so it can help you, me out. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, for me, I am still going to get the system. I am still going to get an Intellivision Miko. And I know there was 10 launch title games. Um, I still haven't heard if there's a specific, what you know, what game's going to go with what. But for yeah. me, I'm going to figure out a way to where I don't specifically give those stores that revenue so like a store that really made me irritated i'm not gonna give revenue to that store but i kind of like disassociated with gamestop because of all the craziness that was going on so it's it's a catch-22 for me because i told myself to stop going to gamestop for every little thing because you know they would buy out the rights to every kind of like mini console and every right to you know stuff like that so it's like oh this is gonna be hard for me you know what i'm saying like I'm going to have an issue right here because I kept telling myself to not go back to GameStop. I took all my pre-orders out. I did this. I did that. And it's like, I'm going to have to figure out a way to be able to get the purple console without paying. Because I don't want to do scalpers either. You know what I mean? Like, that's another issue. It's like, I don't want to pay scalper prices. So what am I going to do? So I'm still going to order it, but I'm going to order it through online only. I'm not going to give any stores any revenue. I'm just going to go through <laughs> online purchases. So I'm going to see if there's any way to like get the console without going through the store. Because I, I've i been through the stores and it's just like it's gotten crazy now with all the, the – some employees hate, you know, GameStop. Some employees love, you know, to work there. And it's like I don't want to be dealing with the, the chaos of – you know, figuring out which one's going to hate GameStop and which one's going to like GameStop to deal with that. Because every time I go in the store, man, it's like one one could be totally against it and they're hating their job and they don't want to do anything. And then another one's like, oh, man, I love GameStop. What can I do for you today? So it's like, 
with the the bad customer service I've been having issues with that. I don't want to get an upsell of like, oh, your pre-orders did for da 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 da, and then this and then that. It's like, man, I went through like twenty upsells one time because of the fact that they were like, here's a book, here's all the pre-orders, here da da da, and I'm like, I I, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. So, I'm probably gonna go online and get the the purple console that way so i don't have to deal with the upselling and the power card and all that stuff anymore even though the yeah. ceo says he's not doing it anymore i still see people complaining about that have you been to gamestop in a while i mean i know with COVID 19 you know you couldn't go to the stores without you know maybe like doing curbside pickup but like were you around like january february when they said that they changed the protocol I haven't been to a game GameStop in a while. The last time I think I was in a GameStop was maybe December, and I yeah. just was because I I was in that it was in near where my brother lives, and I just stopped in and saw a few few things, and got me got me a t shirt. I was gonna buy a game, but I decided not to. Nice. Did they they upsell you on anything? The people that were there didn't upsell me on anything. They were actually pretty nice. At just asking me like. What kind of games I was into, and we had a good conversation about five ten minutes, and then I left. Nice, and your store is cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> the store I go to, man, they are just going up sell like crazy. Even if I have to tell them, I'm like, I'm not interested in anything. I just want to get the game and go. But yeah, it, it's 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 gonna be crazy to see how many people now that they seen that GameStop has gotten exclusive rights to the Purple Console. How many people do you think will change their mind and go switch to just a different color or like just exclusively buy at a different store and, and say, you know, what, I'm, I'm done with the purple one. Yeah. Me personally, I think I think it's going to be it's going to be a low number. I say maybe like 10 percent are going to be like, eh, I'm not going to I'm not going to get the purple one because I hate GameStop, you know, with all the online hate that they're getting. And they're going to yeah. follow suit. But I think there's still going to be a majority of them that are going to like, I don't care about GameStop. I just want my console. Like you said, like you're like, I want to still support the indie developers. I still want to support television. I want them to, to do well. So I, I yeah. see maybe 10% yeah. are going to do that where they're going to like jump ship and just go to a different store altogether. And once we hear all the other colors, like we still haven't heard where the red one's going to go or... I think there was going to be exclusive wood grains were going to be just the regular ones for a certain store too if I'm if I'm right on that one. Yeah. And are you going to get the Amico anytime? Like now that you've heard about it from me, like would you I, I I've heard about it from you and Le level 1 online and several people throughout the community about it, you know, and it looks like a really interesting system. Yeah, it doesn't have the power compared to what you see in your PlayStations or even your Nintendo system. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if it brings you unique value and the games are quality games, no matter if, what what they look like, I would be invested in buying the system. You know, I've seen I've I've, I've seen Tom, Tommy Tellerico through social media and all that, and he's promoting the system well. He talks very very good good about the system itself, and when I look at it, it looks like something that'll be fun and it'll be a different kind of unique thing kind of like how nintendo since they did the gamecube era they've always been like hey we're going to be different when they did the wii and the wii u and the switch how they're totally different than what xbox and playstation are doing and then the miko is going to come in there and kind of give you another option of something hey we're out of side the box we're different we're this and it looks like something that's cool to get into yeah man i can't wait to see from e3 what games are gonna what the game cartridges are gonna look like and then also what now then also what store is going to because it's going to be that's another thing is like is the game cartridges going to be all in one store where I could just go and pre-order every single one or is it going to be this one's going to have an exclusive one this one's going to have an exclusive one this one's going to have an exclusive one you know what I mean like how GameStop yeah. got an exclusive you know the purple is this one so then and then that's another thing like how who remember when we had to like go get like exclusive baseball cards exclusive this exclusive that so it's like we're back to yeah. the 90s again bro <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah where you had I to mean, go to this store to get a or burger king or remember when uh you know mcdonald's had this toy and then you had to go to each specific store to find out everything that was 
that was a tough time on my gas, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for everything. Cause yeah. I was like, yeah, I want to get this one, but <laughs> Would you do that? Yeah. Would you if if they had exclusive game? Would you go to each store, pre-order, and then pick it up? Well, so now when it comes out, the system is a little bit different than the game because when it comes to the games, it depending on what game. If it's a game that I re- when I have a system, I really want this game because it's say it's the top seller game. Everybody has it. Everybody's playing it, and all my friends are saying, "Hey, they have it." It's, it maybe it's an online game. They're like, "Hey, get this game. We'll play with you." It, it, I would struggle to go to a different store to get it, but then again, I might just be be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go online see if I can find a way online to get it." But with nowadays, it's like companies are are trying to get these things, but it's hard because you can just go online so easy and get things, and it's like you know. But with exclusive games, because like nowadays, like you're, you're speaking of GameStop, they they have like when you get special editions of games, they sometimes oh you got you can only get this little little special edition item if you come to GameStop and buy it, so. When it comes to the games for the Amico, I would it I'd be like it'd have to see what kind of game it is actually to know, hey, would I actually go to like Best Buy or would I go to GameStop or here or there just to get that game if it's only sold there. Yeah, man. I hear you on that one. For me, I I would want to get all the physical games because you know I'm I, I'm more about physical than digital. But this is like the first console that's gonna be more digital than physical so it's gonna have to change my mindset on everything so but i would like you said go online and then just pre-order it and have it you know delivered to me or have it you know in one general area because that that's another thing like you can't do exclusive anymore like you said without having people guys like pre-order every single store and then just like soup it all up and then have it delivered to their house and so that's another thing. Are, are they going to be able to monitor all the the scalpers with that issue, you know, with everybody doing the, the bots and stuff like that? And I know yeah. Tommy was monitoring the sales of the exclusive VIP, you know, those ones when they were wood grain and VIP and they got like a special bundle. He made sure that everything that was filtered through was only that one person buying it. And if and if you did buy it. You were had a limit if you went to buy a second console. That was it. You could only buy two, and then anybody else. It was just they kicked their their pre order to the curb because they only wanted two per person. So I like that about that company of the fact that Miko's like, no man, you can't pre order sixteen hundred of them. It's not gonna happen. So that's one thing also is I'm I'm gonna probably go and get every single physical game because the prices are decent. They're saying about between. 20 to the 40 if if they have that price range that's not bad at all i can handle that and get all the games that i want to get and make sure that i have a physical little stack going because we don't know what the game cases are going to look like but i'm hoping that they're the size of like remember the japanese dreamcast i would like that one if it was the size of that that'd be a good little decent size Mm mm-hmm so last question, Chris. If you were to have the Amico, would you stream it? Would you add it to your stream list? I probably would because obviously a lot of people nowadays, since streaming is so popular in YouTube, and we both know it, that, that, that a lot of times when a hot game comes out, recently, in recent minds, you can say Animal Crossing or Final Fantasy VII Remake, which... Those are to way out of the box and what Miko's offering. But it would definitely be something to stream because you know know if you're trying to build your YouTube channel and trying to get some numbers in, you know that, hey, so people are going to be wondering about it because they're not going to initially buy it. And they're going to be like, well, I'm not going to buy it until I know somebody that I trust plays it. Play, plays it. So they may like, hey, I'm, I'm subscribed to Linda, a.k.a. The Gamer Girl, and I see her streaming the system now, and I see her talking about the system let me see what more it's about now this release and she's got her her hands physically on it okay now it's something i want to buy because i see how they're reacting to it you know then also at the same time streaming you can share that experience of you seeing these games for the first time live in front of an audience nice nice so, yeah I would... I would i would stream it too if i had the capacity to do that i would stream all the games that are in my library see how they are that's the one thing I like about the fact that there's so much diversity in our gaming community that technically it's still retro, but it's all the stuff from back in the day remastered or rebooted to where a new audience can see it for the first time. 
and all those games that we used to play back when we were having the Atari and the television are coming back full circle again for this generation to see. So I would I would enjoy a stream to see, you know, because me personally also, I want to see how my buddies are reacting to the games. And, you know, I have a bunch of friends like you who, who stream more than one type of genre. So it's cool to see, like, the games that I play you you're introducing me also to new games that I've never seen before. So you might mm -hmm. go into the Miko and see a game that I wasn't thinking about, play it for the first time and enjoy it. And then I see it and I go, Oh man, that's a game that I wasn't thinking about. So I get that everybody has different tastes. So I'd be like, yeah, man, I'll watch you. I'll watch that person. I'll watch this person and see what they pick. And it will be a fun filled time because of the fact that you can also add your cell phone to it. So if you don't have an Intellivision Miko con like console controller, you could just play it. It's kind of like Hidden Agenda where you didn't need a controller, you just needed your cell phone to be able to play yeah. the game. And so that's one thing is like you don't have to have your friend come over pay like 40, 50 bucks for an extra controller of, of a system that they don't have. They just go download the app play the game with you and you're good to go so i like that one too mm -hmm. so that is, that's a cool feature you know not a not, no other system has that feature you know each system has feature that another doesn't have and this is just another little feature in the future that they may use and down the road somebody else says hey we were trying to adopt that feature but it's something that they get to say hey we did it first yeah man i i dig it so thank you, Chris, for joining me on the podcast today. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. We're all doing well. More than welcome. Anytime, you, anytime I'm available, I'm always here. Yeah, man. So thank you to the internet for catching this stream slash podcast. This is Linda, a.k.a. The Gamer Girl, with Chris Levi 13. I'm going to drop some links in the description. So go check out his channel. He has amazing streams. He is streaming you know, Life is Strange too. He's got a bunch of stuff that he's always doing on his channel. Check him out. I'm Linda, aka The Gamer Girl. As always, keep on gaming, everybody. And this podcast is glitching out. Linda, The Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda, The Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games.